Steeped in history, cobblestone streets lined with picturesque colonial homes that look like they are straight out of a movie. Home to the popular TV show Southern Charm, and so much more, Charleston, South Carolina makes a great weekend getaway for couples and families. Come along as I share with you what you must do while spending time in Charleston. Welcome to the Savvy Sightseer, the channel that helps you travel savvy. One of the most popular things to do while in Charleston is to take a carriage ride around the city. I cannot recommend this enough. If there is one thing I would recommend you do while in Charleston, this has to be it. Charleston is known for carriage rides. You will see these horse-drawn carriages all over the city, and there are a multitude of companies offering carriage rides. After researching a lot, we settled on Palmetto Carriage Works. They were the company that seemed to get the best reviews and fit the needs we wanted. There are different options and we opted for the daytime tour and splurged for the private tour. This was so worth the extra cost. We had the carriage to ourselves. The guide could answer any of our questions and made the experience feel uniquely ours. Also, there's a parking lot right between Palmetto Carriage Works and the Charleston City Market. This allowed us to explore more of the city by foot after our carriage ride, which I will share about later. Once you are on your carriage, the driver will stop at a checkpoint. Because there are so many companies and so many carriages on the road at once, the city requires the carriage companies to pull over at this checkpoint. They spin a cage of balls, pull one out, and that determines the route you will go. Essentially, it's just like a lottery. Supposedly, we got a good one. If that's true, I really have no idea, but it seemed amazing while we were on it. And with the historic beauty that Charleston emanates from all corners, I'm sure there really is no route that will disappoint you. As you go down the cobblestone roads, you feel transported to the past. I found myself in awe of these historic homes, so vastly different than anything I had ever seen. And I was completely enthralled with the stories that our carriage driver was telling us. As a fan of the TV show Southern Charm, Charleston was a stop I wanted to make on our East Coast adventure more than anything. I had seen shots of Charleston and found it to be stunning, but nothing compares to seeing it in person. To experience it up close and personal on a carriage was truly epic. With the carriage ride, your driver is narrating the whole trip. We were told stories of the past where a wealthy man gifted his daughter a home in hopes of luring her back from Europe. Homes where parts of the notebook and Gone with the Wind and The Patriot were filmed. Homes that had seen the Civil War and so much more. I truly can't describe the feeling of reverence I had as we toured these streets that felt haunted by the ghosts of the past. I really love being able to share with you all of my research, experiences, and tips I have learned while traveling. If you are finding this video helpful, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel, hit the like button, comment, and check the notifications for more savvy travel tips. I really appreciate your support so I can keep sharing with you all these savvy sightseeing tips. If a carriage ride is not for you, or you want to see a bit more of the city, you can also take a walking tour. We did this right after our carriage ride to make sure we saw some sights that we missed on our carriage tour. Walking along these streets also lets you take in these tiny little details you might miss otherwise. I had found a walking tour that we followed and it was easy for both the adults and kids. I'll include a link to the one I used in the notes of this video. For this tour, you start at the corner of Church and Market Street. This is right where the historic Charleston City Market is. Take some time to check out the market and get a snack at Callie's Hot Little Biscuit. These were hot and tasty and a great snack to fuel us for our walk. From here, you will follow Church Street to Cumberland Street. Here you will spot the iconic spire of the St. Philip's Church. This spire is the highest point in the city. And in fact, there are rules limiting the heights of buildings so that this remains the tallest point in the city. Once you reach Cumberland Street, you will take a left and you will quickly find Philadelphia Alley, which is also known as Duelers Alley. This stunning pathway was once the location of duels where men would settle matters of honor. Men would take their paces, turn, and shoot. 
Supposedly, there was even a direct path from the alley right to the cemetery. As you walk this long, narrow alley, there is definitely a feeling of a haunted past, such a dichotomy of the beauty that's surrounding you. Once through Philadelphia Alley, you will arrive on Queen Street. Turn left on Queen Street and keep walking until you reach the Ravenel Waterfront Park. Now, if you are a fan of Southern Charm, like I am, you will recognize the name Ravenel. The early seasons featured Thomas Ravenel, and yes, this is named after his ancestor, along with the Ravenel Bridge that is hard to miss. Walk through the green space, and in front of you, you will find the iconic Pineapple Fountain. Make sure to take some time to take pictures in front of this Charleston landmark and one of the most famous photo spots in all of Charleston. From the Pineapple Fountain, you will follow the path to the right of it towards the end of the park, which will drop you off on North Adger's Wharf. Follow this to East Bay Street and turn left. Here you will find probably the most famous photo spot in all of Charleston, Rainbow Row. These 13 brightly colored homes date back to the mid 18th century. After the Civil War, these homes deteriorated and this area was actually thought of as the slums. It wasn't until the 1930s where someone purchased six of them, began renovating them, and then painted them pink. Others followed suit and painted their houses in the bright pastel colors, which has continued to this day. At this point, we decided to change the walking tour a bit and go up Trad Street to Church Street. We turned right onto Church Street and headed to where Church Street and Broad Street intersect and took a left up Broad Street. Where Broad Street and Meeting Street meet, this intersection is cleverly called the Four Corners of Law. This is where City Hall, State House, the Federal Post Office, and St. Michael's Episcopal Church all occupy the four corners of this intersection. Robert Ripley of Ripley's Believe It or Not coined this intersection the four corners of the law once he noticed that the buildings represented city law, state law, federal law, and God's law. If you are lucky enough to be there on an afternoon when St. Michael's is open, make sure to go in. It provides a wonderful respite on a hot day because it does have air conditioning, and the intricate grandeur of this church is unmatched. This church is the oldest surviving religious structure in Charleston. Built in the 1750s, this church has been a place of worship for General Robert E. Lee and George Washington. Also, make sure to take some time to tour the cemetery right outside, which also is laden with history, including the resting place of two signers of the American Constitution. We then made a left back on Church Street, passing by some other intriguing sites, and then made a right on Chalmers Street. There you will find the Old Slave Mart Museum, which was built in 1859 and considered the last surviving slave auction site. At one point during slavery, 35 to 40 percent of enslaved people came right through Charleston. There are other things to see while walking around, but with such a busy morning taking the carriage ride and heading into the afternoon walking around Charleston, we found ourselves ready for a break. So we headed back to the Isle of Palms. So next on the list of places I recommend visiting while in Charleston is the Isle of Palms. We actually chose to stay here at Wild Dunes while visiting Charleston, and I'll go more into detail about that in a future video I'll be posting soon, so make sure to subscribe to my channel to make sure you don't miss it. Isle of Palms is located just about 30 minutes away from downtown Charleston. Take the iconic Ravenel Bridge across the Charleston Harbor through Mount Pleasant and find yourself on an aisle filled with beachside mansions dreams are made of, golf courses, and white sandy beaches. The water here during the summer is warm, and if you like seashells, there are amazing ones all over. As someone who frequents the Oregon coast many times a year and also visits Hawaii often, these are the best shells I have found. If you are staying at the resort here, there's also a ton more to offer. Either way, Isla Palms is a great place to visit for both the beach and to dine. There are several great restaurants here, and the beach vibe provides a nice contrast to the historical antiquity of downtown Charleston. You will find that golf carts are a main form of transportation around the aisle, adding to the relaxed vacation vibes. Charleston has a rich history that dates back to pre-Civil War. And if you visit Charleston, you have to spend some time exploring this complex history. One stop could be Fort Sumner, which unfortunately we didn't have time for. 
But something that I feel you must take time for when visiting this part of America is to visit a plantation. Nothing is quite like this experience and gives you a context of the pre-Civil War past of the southeast part of America. This area's history is unfortunately laden with slavery. When I was planning the trip, I knew that I wanted to understand more of this part of our history and country, and visiting a plantation was necessary. We chose to visit Boone Hall Plantation, which is located in Mount Pleasant, which is less than 30 minutes from downtown Charleston. I was a little nervous about taking my kids here because I wasn't sure if they would fully appreciate the importance of a place like a plantation or grasp the full gravity of it. Luckily, I was very wrong. This ended up being a hallmark of our trip and something I'm sure we will all remember forever. When you arrive at this plantation, you will find yourself driving down the Avenue of the Oaks, which is an oak tree lined dirt road. This plantation was founded in 1681 by Major John Boone. Here, he established a lucrative plantation. His descendants ended up becoming very influential people in the colony and later nation. One of those being his grandson who planted live oaks that line the path to this day. This approach to the plantation is stunning and very hard to describe. It's a photo op of dreams. Once at the plantation, there's so much to do. One thing they recommend is to head straight to the hospitality center and sign up for a house tour. As you wait for your time for the tour, take some time to explore the grounds. You can get a guided kids tour while in the hospitality center, and this was great to motivate the kids to walk around and explore. Probably our favorite thing to explore were the slave cabins due to its influence on our understanding of the past. These are actual slave cabins that have been preserved. This gave my kids and myself the context of the living arrangements that slaves had to endure. Each slave cabin was like a mini museum sharing the history of slavery, this location, the Gola culture, and America's dark past. Another area to visit are the stunning gardens situated outside the large plantation home. Wander towards the back and you will find a majestic large oak tree on the bank of the river running alongside the plantation. If this home looks familiar, it should because part of the notebook was filmed here. Boone Hall is the location of Allie's summer home in the movie. No scenes were filmed inside the mansion as filming is not allowed. You actually can't even take pictures in there when you're taking a tour. That is also why I don't have any pictures of the inside to share with you from our guided tour. But the tour is a must. It was so intriguing to see how they lived in the past. Also, there were scenes filmed on the river and at the dock house, which is another location to check out while you're wandering the grounds. While visiting the plantation, make sure to check out the Butterfly Pavilion and also take a guided tractor tour around the plantation. This is a narrated tour providing you with so much information, not only about the past, but present history of this working plantation. And if you're lucky enough to be there in the fall, they decorate the plantation and you can take a haunted tractor tour. You can expect to spend several hours at this plantation at the very least. We went on a very hot and humid day, but with many shady spots, it was completely doable and worth every second there. Now, I know there is so much more to do while in Charleston that I may have missed, but I do love when you leave a comment to let me and others know what we should do that I did miss on my videos. So if you have a suggestion, please leave it in the comments. Now, if you only have a short time in Charleston, these are the top things I would recommend doing to make sure that you get a sampling of all Charleston has to offer. It's a magical place that is sure to leave you inspired and in awe of America's history and beauty. Thank you for joining me and letting me share with you things to do while in Charleston, South Carolina. Make sure to hit subscribe so you can see more of my videos to help inspire your next travel destination and to help you travel savvy.